Williams, Jake Williams on the Acoustic Guy 1160. He said, Jake, um, former editor of the uh, IUP um, pen, you've, you've written a lot. So you're opinionated, right? Uh, <laughs> So it's interesting, uh, as I've aged, uh, as in as I've gotten older, uh, I've actually, um, you know, I've kind of, as a journalist, I've, I've distanced myself a little bit more from, from opinion and having an idea of, of how I feel about certain issues and instead uh, focusing, you know, almost entirely on the facts okay. you know, and focusing, you know, in, entirely on how a situation plays out rather than um, how I think a situation should or should not play out. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I think it's probably a false statement for anybody to say that, you know, they are... Uh, completely free of opinion. Uh, however, I you know strive to not think so much about myself and, and rather think about the, the things that I'm covering and think about the facts of a situation. Awesome. Um, well, we've had so some yeah. great interesting discussions. About we have. That. Okay, okay yeah. I'm going to hit you with several topics now. Sure. You only now in Twitter you have 140 40 characters. Yes. Okay. Sure. So you only have 140 characters to respond. Right. I don't know how you do that oh, speaking, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a topic. You only have 140 characters to respond. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Elections. Uh, fascinating. <laughs> uh, elections, uh, somewhat difficult thing to cover, uh, and something that needs a lot of work um, to. And there it goes, talking about opinions. Uh, you know, uh, elections are an entirely different beast uh, from what they once were. Um, and I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of initiatives that that may need to happen to change how elections are done a little bit in this country, um, and and how especially how elections are covered uh, in in the press. So that's more than 100. Yeah, you went yeah. over there. Ferguson. Ferguson. Uh, so my very good friend. I'm going to go over 140 again. Uh, my very good friend Dave Gershkorn actually. Uh, he was the editor in chief of the pen after me. Uh, Dave bought a plane ticket and, and flew uh, to St. Louis, Missouri and went to Ferguson and covered the events there. Um, and after talking with him and, and talking about some of the issues that happened there, uh, I think more than anything, Ferguson is, is, a, is a case study of, of you know, what uh, kind of some of the, the issues that we are still faced with in America um, and, you know, issues of of racism, issues of police brutality, all kinds of issues, and it doesn't really matter where you stand on any of those issues, it's just, I think Ferguson was a stark reminder that, that th these issues exist, it's something we got to talk about. ISIS. ISIS, uh, scary, definitely scary. I, I've been talking to a lot of folks this weekend about ISIS, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something a, a little different than anything we've faced in recent history. Uh, and I, I, I don't think that there's much debate over that. I, I don't think you know these, these guys are, are, are normal. I, I think this is something different, something we're not really sure about what to do yet. Um, and uh, you know it's going to be an interesting thing. And, and I hate that the best, um, the best response that I can think of right now is, is only time will tell uh, what's going to happen in that situation. Okay. Gay marriage. Gay marriage. Uh, so I was in the courtroom uh, when the Supreme Court struck down um, the Defense of Marriage Act federally. Um, and so that was, you know, again, regardless of where you stand on the issue, that was a pretty landmark decision. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I, don't, uh, I don't like to express my personal opinion about that um, as a journalist, but, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a, an interesting issue of our time. Uh, to talk about that and to think about what, um, how we're going to respond as a society to that. Okay. Congress. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think their approval rating, you know, kind of covers it. You know, real clear politics puts it at eighteen percent most recently, but I've seen it as low as seven percent um, of approval. Um, you know, I mean, it's a midterm election, uh, so they're not really doing too much, which is a problem. Uh, and that's not even an opinion. That's a fact. It, it's actually a problem. Um, this is the least productive Congress in history at this point, and um, you know that's a that's a huge issue. So we've got some things to look at with that. Okay. The flag, two hundred years. The flag, yeah. So I mean, I, I you know, I'm a, obviously I, I don't know that you cannot be a huge fan of the American flag, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's an it's an icon. It's a it's a you know a testament to American spirit, and American patriotism, and, and you know passion for what we've done. Okay. Cable news. <laughs> Uh, like awful and scary yet again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think cable news is, is doing uh, journalism quite right. Um, I think uh, you know it, it's, it's entertaining, sure, but it but it doesn't quite uh, doesn't quite fulfill the purpose that it should. Okay. The budget. 
it's not being passed. That's the problem. That's one of the issues. Um, you know, the budget's interesting. You know, we, we face a close to seventeen trillion dollar debt, um, and 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 we have a, a Congress and that's unable to pass a full budget. And instead, it's just going to pass a continuing resolution to keep our government funded through March. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of an issue. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if we keep just kicking the can down the road, we're not going to address any of the challenges that we face. And that's again, you know, I mean, I I guess that's theoretically an opinion, but. I mean, if you just, it's like, I can't think of a good example, but I mean, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed. Okay. No, if you, I appreciate that. I hit you with some really, um, really powerful issues. Yeah, These I didn't are, prepare my talking points what, today. Yeah, I, I know. You <laughs> just kind of just went right through it. But if you could interview someone uh, that you haven't interviewed, yeah. if you had three minutes, who would the top three interviewees be? You have three minutes each with each of them. Who would they be? You know, it's funny. You, you've asked me this question before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, despite the fact that I spend a career interviewing people, uh, I have such trouble coming up with that answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would love to interview uh, any president of the United States. Okay. It doesn't matter. Republican or Democrat, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Um, okay. I think there's such power and uh, and intrigue in, that, that exists in the position of the presidency mm-hmm. um, that I would easily, my top three would all be presidents. They would all be presidents. Uh, That's all, interesting. Yeah, no, I'm so fascinated by the executive branch um, and, you know, how it can be simultaneously the most powerful position in the world and the least powerful position in the world. Um, and, and I mean, that's, that's you know, kind of speaks to the brilliance of, of what the founders did to mm-hmm. establish this country. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting um Position. So I mean, it would all be, it would all be presidents. I, I mean, George Washington is my favorite president. Uh, I think he's one of the most brilliant men that ever existed. Some of his writings are just mm-hmm. incredible. Um, Theodore Roosevelt is is was an incredible, incredible president with great drive and initiative. And, and really, you know, both of those two presidents I admire so much because they talk about passion mm-hmm. and they talk about um, desire and 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 a drive to create change and mm-hmm. to do something new and to do something different. I mean. George Washington obviously did something new and different. He was the first president of the United States. Um, so definitely those two. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, really, whatever other president I could get would be number three. I'll just, just keep talking. I, I would love to talk to all 44. All you know, 44. I mean, it'd be, it'd be great. Okay, and in terms of the bias and prejudice in, in journalism, yeah, address that. We, we've talked about that because that, you know, you, you, you hear back and forth there's bias and there's prejudice. President. Prejudice. How do you get? How can you report simply facts? I mean, it's, it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's the. It's the. <laughs> it's the most complicated, simple thing in the world, uh, which I keep throwing out these uh, contradictions. But it, it's very. It's very simple, you know. It, and and there are certain things that are just not biased, mm-hmm. uh, like right. like numbers and figures okay. and facts and and. And I guess facts is again a loose term. We're trying to define what facts are, um, but it, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. You know, I mean, if you write, I mean, what I do a lot is is I write articles about reports or about initiatives or plans, and then I talk to people about them. Mm-hmm. So I can factually state, you know, hey, this is what this plan says. This is what this this, this bill. If you want to talk to right. Congress, this is mm-hmm. what this bill says. Mm-hmm. And then I just quote people on what they say. Okay. Uh, when you're quoting someone and when you're reporting exactly what something is, mm-hmm. there's really no room for bias. You know, there's no room. I mean, I guess you can create room, mm-hmm. but I don't. You know, there's no room to say like, oh, and this happened because of this. No, you can quote people that say that and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's your responsibility to also present the other side of the argument. Is there such thing yeah. as fair and balanced? That's a really tough question. Um, I think yes. Uh, does it exist today? I don't know. Um, if it has, I haven't found an organization that, you know, gets me excited about it all the time. Um, but but I, I don't think I, I don't think right now there is. Okay. Should journalists state their biases and their political leanings beforehand? No. Um, because I, I, I you know, maybe I'm naive, but I believe someone's individual beliefs are, are their own, uh, and they're entitled to them. Mm-hmm. However, uh, you know, obviously the career of a journalist is necessary. Um, I mean, if you're a good journalist, you, you, you don't, that doesn't play a part. It mm-hmm. shouldn't. I mean, you know, you, ha- you can have, you know, you can have your opinions, you can believe what you want to believe, but 
at the end of the day, if you're reporting fact, it's pretty hard to, to mess with that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, it, people will point, well, oh, here's this guy doing that. Well, yeah, and I, I mean, I just told you a minute ago that I don't think anybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think there's a fundamental problem in journalism. Mm-hmm. And there, there are more more than one problem in journalism. I think, I think we got to fix them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope I can. How Now, how do you see yourself, I mean, do you see yourself getting further into politics down the road? Uh, so I see, uh, this is interesting, uh, when you say further into politics, do you mean into political reporting, mm-hmm. or do you mean... Further into it, yeah. uh, in terms of taking it, uh, expanding your role. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I've never been one to be complacent. Okay. Um, and so I, you know, I, I enjoy my current role very much. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love my job. I love what I do. Uh, but I have a lot more work to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so hopefully... <laughs> That will only, you know, involve me going to bigger and better places, doing bigger and better things. Okay. Um, what do you do when you're not writing? Because you're obviously very passionate yeah, about it. Yeah. How uh, do you have fun? How do you wind down? That's a that's a great question. Uh, the answer is I don't I don't much. I, I work I work pretty hard and then I go to sleep. Um, you know, I, I have a couple of good friends and, and we get together, but when we get together, we talk about a lot of the issues that I write about. Um, you know, I'm I'm most fulfilled when I'm having a good chat and a good conversation about. Some of the things that you know matter most right now, and that face the world right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy talking to people. Uh, I've recently been speaking to some interns in Washington, mm-hmm. giving them some advice uh, as someone who is not very far out of that mm-hmm. realm. Um, and I enjoy that. I enjoy connecting people, bringing two people that I know and, and bring them together to mm-hmm. you know further their own goals. Uh, mm-hmm. So you know, if I know someone that knows someone, I like bringing them together mm-hmm. so that they can better themselves. Um, but I really, I mean. I, I work a, a long day and I'm pretty tired, so I just go to bed. <laughs> well, what? Why do you care? <laughs> wow! Wow! That's a that's the question that um, I don't know if I've ever been asked. Um, why do I care? I think the challenges that face our world uh, are too great not to care, um, and that's not again they're not Republican and Democrat challenges. I I, I think I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that says well, we live in a utopia. Mm-hmm. We don't. You know, we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, I, I think everyone has a role to play. Everyone wants to have a role to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, mine just happens to be telling the news, mm-hmm. you know, and, and saying how things are going. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, again, we don't live in a utopia, and, and we can't pretend that that's attainable. Mm-hmm. But we, we can definitely try. And mm-hmm. we can definitely try to make our world better for the next generation. This is the first generation, my generation, um, statistically is the first generation that's going to inherit a lower standard of living than the one before us. Mm-hmm. Um, that's terrifying, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's what I mean when I say the challenges are too great. Mm-hmm. I mean, my generation is facing something that is basically unprecedented. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, um, you know, conversations and thoughts that need to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as a journalist, you know, as the fourth estate, mm-hmm. uh, I like to provide a forum to facilitate that. Okay. Well, you have, I'm going to give you time. You have, I'm going to take one, you got one minute now. I'm giving oh, you all these, these neat little things you're doing. You. Yeah. you got one minute to say anything you want to anybody without huh. restriction. One minute. <laughs> Go. Okay. Uh, so it's interesting. So here I am. In, I'm, in, I'm in Indiana uh, for the weekend. Um, and, and, you know, when I graduated in May, I did not think, uh, I didn't think I was going to be back at all, let alone in four months. Um, but, when you're away from something, uh, I'm not going to hit the I'm going to go over. Um, when you're away from something, they say distance makes the heart grow fonder. I, I don't know about that, but I, I think it gives you uh, some time to think about your time in a certain place. So I didn't, I didn't love my time here in Indiana very much, um, you know, mainly because I was always determined to do something bigger and better. Um, but I met some really amazing people along the way, and I did some really incredible things. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that, and I'm forever grateful for what this town was for me when I was here. You got it, and you kind of touched on that on your letter. You wrote a letter on your thing, and I yeah. read that, and you were yeah. talking about the same thing. I say I follow you. I see what's going uh, you on. Do. Now, <laughs> if you want to get in touch with this guy, you're on Twitter I and am. Facebook. Yep. Uh, what's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Jake Williams DC. Uh, that's the best way to reach me. Um, and uh, yeah, I also have a website, JacobCWilliams.com, uh, or you can reach me on FedScoop at Jake Williams at FedScoop dot com. Okay. One more question before sure. we uh, let you go here. What is the number one, if you had to put your finger on the number one thing that needs, that journalism needs to address 
just that one pressing thing, what would it be? Ed- education. Um, I think we, as journalists, write a lot about a lot of issues. Um, but, I mean, if someone if someone who doesn't know anything about ISIS reads an article about ISIS right now, they're mm-hmm. going to have no idea what's going on in mm-hmm. that situation. So uh, we need to facilitate a forum for them, for people to get some education on what's going on, and education that is so current that it can't be taught in the classroom right education. now. Well, what other, well, you sparked another question. Sure. <laughs> Should the... The, you know, the, the media now, is, uh, this is the third execution that's occurred. Yeah. Yeah. Should, the, the, and should the media show that? No, not in the age of the internet. Uh, if you want to see it, you can see it. Uh, and, and I mean, television, cable news. Yeah, no, don't. Um, sure. No, because, you know, I, I remember, so, I mean, this is going to spark a conversation that we definitely don't have time for. Um, but my generation and my life was defined by 9-11. It was defined by seeing those images. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wouldn't change that. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw, you know, two weeks of just mm-hmm. watching the Twin Towers crash and yeah. fall. Um, and, and I think, again, that defined my generation. Mm-hmm. However, uh, had I been a little younger, that could have done some terrible damage. Okay. Uh, and so it's a pretty messy situation. Again... If if you really think it's important to see that, you can see it, yeah. uh, and and you know you can go, you know you can go to the Indiana Public Library, jump on a computer, and find the video if you want, really want to. If you really want to. Um, and so it's there mm-hmm. if you want to see it, you know. And that's why nine eleven was a little different because mm-hmm. you know there wasn't really anywhere else to see that stuff. Yeah. But but now you know you can find it online. So it's it's a it's a cable news. I. I I never really believe in the censoring of anything, but certain things are just too much. Sure. Um, I wouldn't show someone being beheaded. Okay. Uh, Domestic violence and pro sports. You know, so I'm not a huge sports fan, um, so I don't have any particular comment on any of the issues that have happened with, you know, the Ravens or or any of the other teams. Um, I mean, I think domestic violence is a problem across the board, something Mm -hmm. we ought to, you know, figure out what to do um, about. And, um, you know, again, I I think domestic violence is, is, is just a general issue. I don't know that it's any more or less of an issue in pro sports Mm -hmm. so that's I mean that's really that's really what I've got for you I I don't know it's it's not really anything um, that's that's different in the realm of sports I think it's just it's just an issue across the board that people need to be aware of and figure out how to address well, I hit you with some questions, huh? Yeah, and, and I tried to I tried to dodge them as best I, I could did, in true in true journalist fashion. But uh, well, what we're going to do, uh, you called, and we're going to have you back because we had abbreviated sessions. Yeah, we yeah. Folks. We have you back because we want to dwell a little deeper into some of the subjects because they're sure. powerful issues. How long are you going to be in town? Uh, I'm leaving tonight. Okay. Well, you're gonna when you come back, yep. let us know. And we'll get you back on. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, we'll hopefully make this audio available for folks. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be All great. Right. Thanks for having me. I think. Hey, uh, thank you, Jake. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, we hit a lot of pretty interesting topics in, in a short amount of time. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm <laughs> impressed. <laughs> check him out. Check him out on Twitter and Facebook, and he also has a website, just like Jake Williams. Uh, he's uh, he's all over the place, folks. A great writer, a uh, cool guy. Uh, thanks, Jake, for coming in. Of course. All right, you're listening live to Acoustic at 1160 WCCS.